Hey guys, it's Charles Jager with premiumbeat.com. In this tutorial, I wanna show you some new stabilization software called Real Steady Go, which stabilizes GoPro footage using the internal gyro information straight from the camera. And the results are even better than GoPro's own HyperSmooth. Okay, so some of you may have actually already heard of Real Steady, but I'll give you a quick backstory on them if you haven't. They're most known for their After Effects plugin, which is arguably the best post stabilization plugin there is. The results are stunning and it's frequently used to stabilize racing drone footage and hyperlapses. However, it is an After Effects plugin geared toward professionals, so it's quite expensive at $399, and it also means you have to have an Adobe Creative Cloud membership in order to be able to use it. But they've just released a new application called Real Steady Go, which is $99 and it's a standalone application, so you don't have to have Premiere or After Effects in order to be able to use it. And you can stabilize your footage, then use your own editor of choice. The only catch is that the software only works with GoPro cameras because it's actually using that internal gyroscopic information recorded with the clip from the camera. And because of that, it gives you near flawless stabilization really quickly. And it looks just like your camera was actually on a gimbal. Real Steady Go works with all GoPros with an internal gyro, which is pretty much from the Hero 5 Black and up, including the Hero 5 Session, which is what I have. Before we dive into using the software, let's first check out some real-world tests, and then let's also compare Real Steady Go to Warp Stabilizer, which is included in After Effects and Premiere Pro. Alright guys, for this first test, what I've done is I've hard-mounted the GoPro Session to the hood of my Jeep. And I'm on a closed road right here, so I'm going to barrel down this road. Maybe adding some extra movement for good measure. And we're gonna see if we can break this software right off the bat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda of looking forward to this. All right, now we can take a look at the results. Here's the raw footage from the GoPro, shakes and all. And here's the footage after it's been processed by Real Steady Go. And the analysis time on this clip was under one minute. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison. For the second test, I just mounted the GoPro onto a handle and then ran with that down the road. You can see this is less than ideal footage. And now we can see the stabilization on the footage from Real Steady Go, which isn't surprising after how well it handled the footage shot on the Jeep. Now in comparison, Warp Stabilizer is going to have to analyze the footage frame by frame, which will take a significant amount of time compared to Real Steady Go. Warp Stabilizer is basically trying to reverse engineer the movement of the footage, and unfortunately with fast moving footage, the results are often a bit wonky. And the image analysis will be further thrown off by visual elements like lens flares and rolling shutter. Something that Real Steady Go isn't affected by, again because the stabilization is just being based on the gyro movement. And now we can see a side-by-side -side comparison between Warp Stabilizer and Real Steady Go. Now let's dive into the Real Steady Go application and walk through stabilizing a clip. I also should mention you can download a free trial of Real Steady Go from Real Steady's website if you want to follow along. And I've included a few GoPro clips from my shoot with a project file that you can download and use those clips as well. I also want to note that all the GoPro clips that I shot in my shoot were 4x3 aspect ratio. I find that aspect ratio gives you a little more latitude when it's going to be stabilized in post. Once we launch the Real Steady Go application, we're going to see a really basic user interface. And we need to come over here to load a video. And that allows us to select the GoPro clip that we want to work with. So I'm going to select this clip right here from the Jeep and click open. Once we click that, we get a pop-up saying it's running the numbers on that GoPro clip. Essentially, it's just analyzing the gyroscope metadata that's associated with that clip. And once that completes, it'll automatically start playing the stabilized version of our clip. And in a lot of cases, I've found that these results are going to be perfectly fine. And you really won't need to refine that much after this, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause down here really quickly. And if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and save that video out right now. And for most users, that's probably what they're going to want to do. However, we do have a few other basic options we can adjust here. And if we navigate down here to the bottom, we have these settings. Go ahead and toggle this open and we have advanced settings here where we can make a few changes 
So we have the smoothness and we can adjust that obviously by dragging this back and forth. And as I do that, you'll notice down here, the cropping speed is kind of following along with that. So it's linked to the smoothness and we can check or uncheck that. And what the cropping refers to is just gonna be cropping in on our actual video. And essentially that's how all post stabilization works. It crops in on it. That way it gives you room to rotate and everything without getting any black bars around the edges. But we can control the speed of that here with this option, just in case maybe it was cropping in too far and we wanted to have a little more variance there, we could adjust the cropping speed separate from the smoothness. I'm we'll go ahead and set this back to the middle. Now another setting that I found really valuable is the lock horizon here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and close these options really quickly and I'm gonna move to further down in this clip. And you can see right about here, the camera and the GoPro actually started leaning a little bit on the little mount I had set up on the front of the Jeep. So you can see the road isn't exactly level right here even though it's playing back really smooth. But what we can do if we come back over here to these settings, if I check on lock horizon and go ahead and click okay, It'll know where the horizon is based on that gyroscope data. So we're gonna get a perfectly level horizon every time. And you can see as I move this back through to play through, you can see how everything now is staying perfectly level even though the camera is getting knocked off axis at some point on this road because of all the jarring and everything. Diving back into the settings really quickly, we have an option for time-lapse if you're doing like a time-lapse or a hyperlapse type option. And then we have another one to flip the gyro data. And this is kind of interesting. On one of the shots I did with the Jeep where I mounted it really low, I actually had the camera upside down. And see GoPro, when it saves that clip, it'll actually go ahead and recognize the camera's upside down and it'll flip the clip to be right side up. And when I was trying to stabilize that, I couldn't get it to work for some reason and I realized that it had been flipped. So then you just need to check on the flip the gyro data if that is the case and then it'll be perfectly smooth. And then finally, we can also crop in or make a, a clip shorter if we want to with these indicators here on the edges. I'm just gonna leave this as the full clip. And now we can go ahead and click to save the video out. And you can see when we click that, it's gonna start playing back the clip and it's gonna kind of render it almost in real time, maybe a little bit slower. And she's gonna save a new version of that video out. And when the render completes, you're gonna see we have this new smooth version of our clip saved right next to the original version. I think the pros for Real Steady Go are obvious and hopefully there'll be future support for other action cameras or maybe even smartphones that have gyros built in. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial looking at Real Steady Go. Make sure you check out all the other tutorials we have on premiumbeat.com, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.